one. Yo, yo, yo. Hey, 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 hey. Hello. <laughs> hey, you guys. How are you? Oh, um, much better. Why? Much better. Because I'm here and recording with you, friends. <laughs> I love you. Love you too. Love you too. It's uh, it's a, it's a, it's a wild, wild, a wild, a wild night. A wild, wild Wednesday night. I know that's us. Is that a John Mellencamp song. No. Yeah. No. Wild night. Ooh, oh yeah, it is. <laughs> wild night is calling. What is a wild night? What is wild night? It's a ain't it's us. A, Okay. Anus? <laughs> it's my anus? I said it ain't us. It ain't. Yeah, oh you said God. anus. Is this how we're starting? It is. Yeah. Jesus. It is how we're starting. It is how we're starting. How are you guys tonight? Welcome to the Quarantine Book Club. I hey. missed you guys. I missed you too, missed you. sis. Uh, by the way, I'm Bob. I'm Rance. And I'm Lithia. Yeah, cool. We're going to... um. We're going to talk about some Bob, trash tonight. Bob, I'd really like to start this out the right way, though, if you don't mind. Could you? Okay. Could you? Uh, I got a little something here for you. We're talking about Neil Gaiman's Sandman this week, right? And so right. I really I really feel like we got to start this thing off spooky and strange. Are you ready? Oh, you me, ready? yes. Are yes, you ready? I am. Are you ready? Okay. Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready. In the world... Where terrible things come to life. It's Bob Rance and Lithia. Also known as the Sandman. Oh Jesus, I'm so tired of hearing themes for these uh. for, the, for these episodes. <laughs> I'm so tired of hearing this oh, stinger theme after a cool thing happens, and it's like, here's a cool orchestral thing. The Sandman. Yeah, I'm... it's fine, man. You know, it's like they it's like they planned it out. It's like hit it. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. And Q sound. You'd think the way they they thought about it, it's like they were. The plan man. <laughs> you know, one of my favorite things is I think a lot about what I want to have for lunch. And I think about all the toppings, the mustard, the mayonnaise, the cheese, Swiss, cheddar, the meat, the ham sandwich. sandwich. <laughs> the ham sandwich. <laughs> the ham sandwich. Mm -hmm. So we are, we are recording live tonight. So I really quick want to say hi to everybody who is hanging out with us in the chat uh we are recording simultaneously uh to twitch and broadcasting on twitch we are recording live so hello people who are out there lannery burgers stubby bergamot how are you it's good to see you we have a lot to bitch about tonight oh my god oh my god so do we so, <laughs> so do much to bitch about <laughs> this is not like it was last week no i don't it's <laughs> fucking <laughs> not different like I it remember, was last hey week. remember last week when you guys were like this book's really good. Well, I got news for you. Hit it. Hit. Hup, hup. It's fucking bullshit. <laughs> Oh my god, dude! It went from bad to worse, and you guys last week were like, "It's not bad, it's great," I'm, and I was like, "It's okay, it's okay." Also, first off, before we start, it's okay to like the thing if you really like this. It's fine. It's not that I don't think that like I have some I have some I have some problems with it. I think as you could go way worse on a purchase of an audiobook, um, at least for the first half. Sure, for the second sure. half, just throw it in the toilet. 
I part of the second half. The last like three stories, worthless. Well, so so we got to talk about that. Lithia is gonna. I, I I've been doing a lot of research actually about this. I've been talking to. Lithia's spe- not doing crap. No, Lithia's listening. To you you guys know, talk, but you know this and I'm shit. Gonna jump in. You That's know this shit happen. though, but you know this shit better than we do. I was actually talking to our friend Bergamot Morning about this because I am coming to the to realization. You're absolutely right, Bob and Lithia. You're absolutely right too. The second half of this Audible original for Sandman is fucking garbage compared to the first half. Not just not good, it's fucking garbage. And I have a ton of reasons why, and I think Please they're pretty it. solid. Whoa, okay. It's fucking garbage. It's fucking garbage. It's not just any garbage. It's not just... It's The garbage man. <laughs> so, the reason we're doing that is because the beginning of every episode, there's this, you get like two or three minutes of plot, and then you get like the clever thing that happens, and then there's a fucking stinger of this music, and at the end of it you hear somebody say, the Sandman. And it's like, it's so... The first few times you hear it, you're like, yeah, I'm pumped. All right, cool. Yeah, I cool literally stories. got goosebumps. Yeah. I got goosebumps from the music itself is cool. It's amazing orchestral music. And then after and- the 20th time, you're sort of like, God, why are the why do I got piles? God, my back hurts. Fucking, I don't know. I don't know what feels so weird with myself. Ugh, the herpes. I don't think does her does the herpes give you piles? I don't fucking know. I don't know. I just the whole. You know how herpes works? I don't, Rance. Yeah. I think you need to go to the doctor, guys. Just bottom line, there's something else happening there. It is yeah, guys, no. Guys, I just want to tell you something, just between you and I. I've been thinking about this a lot. Ever since we started this audiobook of the Sandman Audible Original by Neil Gaiman and Dirk 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 Ma- Ma- Magathar. Dirk, Dirk Magmums, Dirk, Dirk Magmums, directed by Dirk Magmums, written by Dirk Magmums, it's, it's produced by Dirk Magmums. I've been having some dark dreams. I've been having some bad nightmares. I've been having some problems in my life. I've been impotent. I've been losing control of my functions. I've been waking in cold sweats, and I have been so scared to admit to you guys that there's something wrong with me. It's that there's another world. A dark world. A world that we can't see. That we can't hear. That we don't know. There's actually no rules governing anything in this fucking book. Guys, I don't know what. I just wanted to press all those noises. I'm sorry. It'll make you the sad man. <laughs> All right. Let's actually, though, I want to get into talking about this because I'm so, I'm so done with this. And I, I'm so angry that I'm done with it because I am right with you. I'm, I, I really enjoyed, um, I really enjoyed the first half of the book. I did not enjoy the second half. And I believe that comes down to several things. And I'm going to start this off with this and maybe you guys can, can interrupt us or you can, you can come into this. <sighs> I feel like the problems do not lie with Neil Gaiman. I don't feel like the oh, problems no. lie with the writing. I think the writing, for the most part, is really good. Who am I to criticize Neil Gaiman? The man is a success. He's a legend. I think the problems come down to the audiobook directing and the fucking terrible choices they made with 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 the with the 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 the, the, uh, the layout of the audiobook. It's so bad, and it's. On so many levels, and I why I, didn't why didn't they just stop after the second major story arc? Like, why did they add three three short stories onto the end of it? We're like, here's a story about kitties and throwing kittens into a, into the river, and here's a story about um a, uh, a, a elemental girl dying. Right? How I don't know. I don't know how she died. I literally don't know how she died all they did was do some sound effects and um what the what the heck's death's name uh cat uh cat dennings cat goes dennings. uh do you want to die and then and then there's some weird sound effect noises and she's dead and hello 
Hi. Uh, no, Mr. Whoever, uh, Mr. Martins, she's dead. Like, what the hell happened? Can um, you please explain? And then the last story where they're just like, oh, hey, guess what? Oh, William Shakespeare. Bergamot just said, she said, I'm full of skepticism for the whole notion of adapting a comic book to audio, but okay. Right, like, that is the fucking problem mm -hmm. right there. So that's, that is the problem with these, especially just like what you said, the last three chapters on this. We didn't they have they have nothing to do with the story arc. It should have stopped. There was no reason to have them. They were separate. If it would had if it had been released separately, it's you cat. hang on to that. It's a this cat. is it's a pretty cat. cat. Bob's Sorry, just I got a cat. Wait, Bob. I, Bob. I think there might be something on the horizon. Catman. Better than Scatman. I was, I know. I It took me everything I had not to say that. Hello, kids. Um, Hello, Rance, Bob, and Purple Hair Sister. <laughs> purple Hair Sister. This is Lithia. <laughs> yeah, also this week, um, we're just going to go ahead and try to keep up with the chat as we go along. Because yeah. it's, it's, we're having a lot of fun, whatever. It's a, it's a podcast. Who cares? I want to say hello to, um, new listeners tonight new 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 twitch uh friends lannery and uh venus vastrada yes um, yes uh, yeah. one, of, one of baltimore's welcome uh, premier queens yes welcome um I, I it's god man like this also hey can we talk for a second about the credits i know i'm jumping all the way I to didn't the listen end to him. didn't listen to him uh, it was dumb didn't four listen to him. minutes over four minutes seven, of credits seven and a half minutes i actually. listened right? to all Why? the credits. Why? I, because I was in my car and I didn't have anything else to do and I same. could not escape. Absolutely same. But I wanted so to I why. wanted I wanted but I wanted to make sure that I had the full experience with this because I mean I was really proud of myself that I went from the beginning to the end in only like a couple days. But yeah, but I needed I felt like I just I I I'm one of those people who sits in the movie theater and is there for all the credits right. all the way to the end because there's so many people that we don't listen to right, right. that worked on it and and worked very hard and it's their livelihood and I feel like I owe it to them so, to listen to them. So they deserve the recognition, but you know what's even better about that is like the fact that they're like, oh, starring all these famous people like Andy Serkis, Baby Newworth, Michael Sheen, and then featuring all of these people who read all the small parts, 50 parts to a person. And there at the end, who cares about them like waitress number two? <laughs> I OK, so I, this is where I think we can really, really start talking this week. So we are going full spoilers. So if you've never read or listened to The Sandman, A, you're apparently 30 years behind the way all of us fucking are. So um, two, okay. two. I am going to say right now that the ideal way to experience this, because I experienced the first half of what Audible chose to be the basis for its originals, uh, the first half of it I read the comic book of as well. That's the ideal way to experience this. So what we're doing is we're basically bitching about an audio production, overproduced audio production version of this that is – Really weirdly chosen in all of its directional like things. So I want to talk. I want us to talk about first and foremost, like like starting out. Why is the first half? Lithia and I were both on. We were on we were team, team loving gaming. it, right? Yep, team yep, loving it totally. Bob was on team. This eats balls in the bad way, not the good way where we enjoy it. Right, right. So then, now sometimes you can just put some balls in and go. This is like, ugh. what happened with the second story arc? The first story arc is Dr. Destiny and the Sandman in the DC universe, and he's still in the DC universe. And the second story arc is the Dream Vortex, Rose, mm -hmm. um, Unity, Unity, um, G Gilbert, Gilbert, and going against the Corinthian, one of the uh, one of um, the Dream Lords, one of Morpheus's guards, basically who has escaped in the wake of him leaving the Dreaming because he was taken captive. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Okay, so talking about, we've talked about how this reminds me a lot, uh, uh, us a lot of uh, some of the other Vertigo titles um, of that era. 
when they described the Corinthian and they talked about how he had mouths where his eyes should yes. be. Oh my God, he's got he's got mouths for eyes. If I have to did hear you, someone else you say that. In, in, in an over dramatic way, one more fucking time in an audiobook. Oh my god, he's got he's got the house for eyes. If I have to hear, if I have to hear, he came out of the darkness. I saw him. I knew he was there. Oh my god. Oh my god, he's so scary. He's so dark. It's so nineties. Oh fuck, he's got mouths for eyes. Like, one more fucking time. I heard, like, 20 times some random character that the Corinthian kills going, Oh, my God, he's, he's got mouths fried. Look out, uh, look out for his mouth eyes. How's his teeth hey, there? Hey, As I don't understand how he's got mouth eyes. Let's switch characters. I don't understand how he's got mouth eyes. And if you think that's an exaggeration out there, Holy shit, it's not. The acting just gets so overdone in the second half. Like, it's like a second, it's like another fucking director directed it all, and it sucks. Uh, no, it's all Dirk Mags. They need you to know that it's all Dirk Mags. Can I tell I, you? That I, I need it. Let me point something out. Directed by, yeah, yeah. written yeah. by, adapted yeah. by. I need to point something out. With you, what's up? Okay. <laughs> Is it your son <laughs> randomly showing up in the background is, visually? My, my son's just showing up as a ghost in the background. It's fine. Um. I don't understand why having mouths for eyes is so horrible. Bob just fall over. Is that, is that mouth, how done we are? Eyes. He's got eyes. He's got a mouth for an eye. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Please hit, hit, it, hit, it. hit it. Hit it. Okay. Hit it. Hit it. Bob's down. Johnny says Bob's down. I fell down. <laughs> I don't even want to talk about how that happened. It just, <laughs> uh, is your cat I'm okay? great. I don't I'm know, okay. I'm terribly my embarrassed. Dad. My Sorry. pride is hurt. No, don't be. Um, because you know what? You know whose pride should be hurt right now? The pride is Dirk Mags. Is Dirk Mags. It's Dirk Mags, man. He took. Neil Gaiman is... I was making a point! Make your point! I'm, I'm so sorry. sorry. I'm Look, so sorry. Fell. I stole I stole He mansplained gravity spotlight. to you Jesus. by falling. Please do. Go ahead. Lithia, go for it. Go I for don't it. understand why having mouths for eyes is so horrible. Because you can't if see I shit! Had, if I had mouths for eyes, I'd be... Hell yeah! I can eat so much more! Why? Look at me! I'm Lithia, and I have mouths for eyes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat all of it. I'm gonna <laughs> eat all Nick, of it. Can we talk about? Can we talk for a second about Dirk Mags and his his freaking love? Yes. Wait, okay, no. Well, let me go back to let me go back to the question about mouth eyes. Did it remind anybody of Cassidy from uh, uh, Preacher? I don't know how many of you, if any of you've gotten that yes, far, but yeah, they, absolutely. Where, Cassidy wears sunglasses all the time, and he right. takes them off. And I don't know, if, I don't remember. Are they voids or are they yeah, mouths? To my knowledge, they're voids. Or are they assholes? They're probably assholes. Because with the way that the way that comic works, it's like, oh, oh no! Can you hit it for me? Oh yeah, okay, okay. In a world where there's scary stuff, but God is scary. assholes for eyes bad directional choices all around number one bad directional <laughs> choice in this you guys that mm -hmm. what the fuck happened all of a sudden with neil gaiman no longer narrating the second half of the audience i series? don't know like, i don't know he just they just stopped it was like they decided we're we can only uh even though this is neil's project we can only hold on to him for like the first half of the book he just stops they just Peace stop out. allowing him to narrate and the, it loses I, I wrote down here that it loses with little direction without a narrator, it loses absolutely all sense of what the fuck is happening for the most part, of action and 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 space and, and all that kind of garbage. And and so I have no clue half the time what's happening in the second half of this with the whole like him trying to figure out like like what the fuck's going on with the Corinthian. Like I couldn't tell you half of what the fuck happened because the direction was so bad because there is no guidance through narration for you. It's just a bunch of people screaming. Like I don't, I, I, there's a lot of screaming happening in this book. I had internal screaming. Like what? What were you internally screaming at? The whole thing? Um, 
just the whole thing because <laughs> I had the rest of it. And you're a Sandman fan, right? Like you love it. I am a Sandman fan yeah. and I love it and I really do. But I was. Mathia, before you continue, before you continue. I know what you are. Sandman fan. Uh, I know everybody out there is probably like, why do they keep hitting that? Imagine hearing that 20 times over the course of an audiobook. Mm -hmm. Like 20 I, times over the course every, of an audiobook. Every, every chapter fucking episode. you hear it. Every because, chapter. The, because why? Because they created it as an audio show and then somehow got, I think, got wrapped up in Audible. We're like halfway yeah. through, they're like, oh, well, we can't, like, what radio station is going to play this? Oh, I know. Let's put it on Audible. Because, uh, you know, uh, Amazon owns everything. I mean... So I shopped on Amazon. Oh, also, uh, uh, Burgers wants to know, if does he have eyes for an asshole? <laughs> He's got an asshole for eyes, but does he have... So he can only see vape tricks that you do with your butthole. <laughs> Could you imagine taking a poop like that? <laughs> oh, my God, I see everything. <laughs> I like that we have, we have descended into not even talking about the content, but rather just... just uh, because because you have to separate the so content. This is shitty. Yeah. It's why well, okay lithium now love it. why do you why do you, why did you think it was she my big my biggest problem from the from the get-go of the second half the dollhouse right which is already a weirdly it's a weirdly imbalanced story in all of its in all of its regard like but but I, my problem was the direction man like without neil gaiman there i got no idea what the hell is happening half the time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no i agree that's exactly it yeah um, I, I think it was, I think they could have stopped after the Corinthian and I would have been perfectly fine. That's where it should have yeah. stopped. That's where it should have ended. It should have ended with the sealing up of the storyline with, yep. uh, with the, the, the vortex, uh, like the unity. sealing up of the story. I'm going to put a big yeah. fucking quote. Oh, well that. actually yeah, the let's sealing talk about up of the story because, Hey, I showed up in your dream and I can, Hey, you can do anything in dreams. And that's how they did it. Literal deus ex machina. They went. You can do anything in dreams. So now I'm the vortex. Yeah. Yep. You can live. You have the first story, which I think to me, the first, I can't remember the first collection of stories, right? That ends mm -hmm. with the the imprisoning of Dr. Destiny in Arkham Asylum. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm putting my hand in the right. Okay. Ends with the imprisoning of Dr. Dr. Destiny in the asylum. Then you have this bit, the, you introduce death. Then we go into the dollhouse story. Mm -hmm. And we come out of the other side of it, and I was under the presumption that what was going to happen was that we were going to see the Sandman, mm -hmm. Morpheus. Yes. Really begin understanding what it means to be human? Like, to really <laughs> begin expressing his humanity in the world? Instead, that what you expected? Uh, yeah, yeah, I did, especially after the conversation with death, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I... I so he goes to, there's a whole convention of serial killers. There's a whole convention of serial killers. And sure, maybe Dream is like, I'm going to make you all basically live in your nightmares or whatever. But he doesn't punish anybody really at all for fucking killing people whatsoever in any regard or basically uh. taking sexual advantage of young people. Like, remember, so, remember what I said last week. That's because that's because Dream is a bad protagonist. He's not good. He's he not doesn't. Good. He he has no humanity. Like he is so alien that he doesn't. Through the course of these stories, like yeah, he just goes, oh hey, guess what? You do a lot of bad stuff. Well, um, you can keep doing it. You'll just be sad about it. He didn't even really fucking give the Corinthian any issues. Like I no, was waiting for like, there to be like a cool fight, and he was like, "Fuck you, I asshole. I'm done." Uh, Berg, I know it's not his job. I know it's not his job. Like last week, we were talking about the fact that uh, I don't like him as a protagonist for like a story that I'm listening to because I want someone who actively. Uh... Hey, my fiance is home. I'm gonna oh. say hi. 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 No, they can't. They can't see you. <laughs> Lydia's head is morphing. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, your head is morphing. She says. I. I... But did you see my hair? Mm. <laughs> the, only, the only protagonist that I give a living shit about is Rose. Yeah, and I'd like I it's more like and I I guess I shouldn't be looking at Morpheus as um 
as a protagonist, more as uh, a focal point for the story. He's a vehicle for story movement, basically, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. He's not. He's not even like most of the time the main character. Like yeah. the first couple of stories, he is. Like once you get, but once he gets all the stuff back and like that, I guess maybe that's the other thing. Once you get through the Doctor D storyline, he for the rest of the of the book, he's not your protagonist. Yeah, yeah. After after he puts Doctor D back in Arkham, it's about other people. And I I understand. There is Go no ahead, set. There is no set thread that connects all the stories in the end. And mm-hmm. they're and, just separate stories. Well, and that was the thing, like, like too. And I know, obviously, Sandman continues going on, right? So I know uh, when we're talking, I was talking to Bergamot earlier, and and clearly some of these characters like reappear later on. But I'm only, oh my god, I just flung something off my finger and into my body. Um, <laughs> was it your ring? It was my ring. Um, I'm only recognizing cool, this obviously boy. within like the the bracket of the audiobook. And so the mm-hmm. the dream country, the the four stories at the end of this, which is the thousand cats. Um, facade with Element Girl from DC, mm-hmm. um, a Midsummer Night's Dream, and something. Uh, there's a there's another. That's it. Is that is that it? Um, no, it ends. Uh, it ends it on Midsummer Night's Dream. That mm-hmm. thank God because after that, I wanted death to come and get me. They <laughs> not cat, not can't cat, no cat denning, denning though. Um, no. Hello, hello. I'm here to get you. Okay, thanks. You bye. Um, please, please. Hi, I, did I walk in on you? Did I? Can I come in? In the context of the audiobook, <laughs> those those possess absolutely no meaning, other than no. to maybe like solidify the power level that Morpheus possesses. But they could have sprinkled mm-hmm. those in throughout. And I think that's my problem is that they were they they kept. I mean, it's more, more my, they kept so stringent to the dialogue and the layout of the comic books. They didn't understand what makes a good audio production and it's certainly not just adhering to the fucking order of these select mm-hmm. story arcs i don't mind if they included those those extra episodes right. i love a filler episode to be honest with you sometimes when you're when you're when you have a storyline a filler episode people hate it people hate it but one of my favorite episodes of um star trek deep space nine is where Bashir and his girlfriend and Worf and Dax go on vacation to, I think it's to, to Riza, maybe. I, I'm not sure. It might be Riza. But anyway, they go on vacation. And it's in the middle of all these other storylines. And it's just this random filler episode where they're like, well, we need enough, enough episodes to fill up this season. Let's have a vacation episode. Cool. And I'm okay with that. Like, I would be the cat story. Uh, the cat story was, aside from the fact that I didn't need a description of uh, throwing kittens into a river in a plastic bag. Uh, 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 trigger warning, trigger warning. Yeah, yeah. like I don't, God. that was unnecessary. Uh, like you could have told me and let me use my imagination and say, hey, uh, I, I'm a mama cat and you they stole my baby cats from me and I don't know what happened to them. Instead, there was this spiritual connection to them where you heard about everything that happened to them and that bothered me because where, why do I, how do I get to use my imagination in a media that is, Supposed to be about using my imagination. Now, buddy, I'm going to tell you what the fucking worst part of that is. Story it cause, was. Is it because Neil Gaiman wants me to be spooked out no. by bad, the badness of humanity? No, I don't even think. Again, I don't think that's a Neil Gaiman issue. Like, I, I think, I think as an author, right? Like, like you, you incorporate these things that are dark, but they're only there for the most part to highlight uh, better qualities later on, right? Mm-hmm. I think that's entirely a like this weird, as I call it in here. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk. I, t- I wrote down what I called the Jack Mort problem, which I'll talk about soon. If you know who Jack Mort okay. is, it's a reference to um, uh, the Dark Tower, and I have a problem with this character, the Dark Tower, named Jack Mort, and I'll tell you why that okay. is soon. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, where it's like dark for darkness' sake, right? But actually, my issue is not the cats being thrown in the fucking river. It's the overproduction of hearing cats have fucking sex in my audiobook. That's the fucking problem I have. Sorry, I don't need I don't need BB Newworth talking about how the Tomcat came over to me and she he he was golden and beautiful and he put it inside me and 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 then hear fucking cats yelling in the background. I don't need that shit in my audiobook. You know why? Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Uh who does that? Who fucking needs that in an audiobook? Yeah. Dude, okay, Dirk Mags has some weird hang-ups. Let's like I'm not a, I'm not going to yo, I'm not going to um like 
shame you for any fetish like have your fetishes it's cool man i got fetishes everybody got fetishes it's fine God, we're like, we, don't kink, we don't kink shame except when you when you have this real weird kink for asmr to the point where that's all this half of this like all the sound effects in this audiobook they're are bad ASMR. asmr also by they're the way bad, Ber bergamot by the way i know you said you had a problem with this particular story arc so start typing that thing up because i want to talk about it soon mm -hmm. um, um Hey, look, I'm just going to be a part of this book. Give me a second. Oh, Hold on. Wait. Hold on, Dirk Mags. <sighs> I, mean, I heard, I heard wait, that you were... Wait, can I, can I get in on this, too? Yeah, you can. You can. Wait a minute. Are you guys you in a tavern? To... Are you guys in a hey, tavern? We are in a tavern. Can you yeah. hit it for me? Oh, we can... Sad man. Uh, so I heard you guys were really, really bothered by the fact that Dirk Mags, the fact that he, um, likes the noise of people drinking and eating, almost I'm so overwhelming. I'm tired of it. And I'm so tired of hearing drinking. And so, so when Hob and the Sandman are meeting, years mm -hmm. in, years out, in uh, A Man of Good Fortune, Chapter Thirteen, and you hear Hob, and he's like, oh. Hello. Uh huh. Like, oh, mate. I ran. <sighs> I ran so long. It's good to see you again, friend. Afterwards, it's been a hundred years. Oh, the wine's got a bit hold of me, but it's all right. Uh, oh. Or in the Corinthian, and when the Corinthian, when they're like, oh my god, he's got fucking eyeballs. He's got eyes, but they're mouths. And he's like nomming on eyeballs, and he's like. Wait, 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 wait. This is gonna be the worst rated podcast. Yeah, but one eyeball. Dude. I love it. I love it. This is Dark Mag's audiobook, baby. It was infuriatingly obnoxious to the point where like how did nobody listen to it and say to him, Hey Dirk, maybe you should dial that back a little bit. Are you too busy jerking off to it? The it's the truth. I just had gushers, mango naked. And a slim Jim mouth at the same fucking time, and I want to die. Um, congratulations. But if if any of the eating was a part of the plot growth, uh, that would have been fine, right? But I don't need mm -hmm. to hear Hob, Hob, a character that shows up in one of these chapters, who we never return to again, right? At least in the course of this audiobook, mm -hmm. I don't need to know that Hob spends several hundred of his years of life as an alcoholic because. Like, I don't need to hear him drink. It's not important to the fucking plot, so I don't have to hear these throat noises. And it's, I'm begging myself the entire time, please just keep listening because it's getting fucking, it's going to be fine. Okay. It's going to be fine. And it just gets worse. And if, yeah. if, in uh, one of my major problems with that story is that at one point, uh, uh, Dream says to him, hey, bro, look, um, trading slaves is bad. Don't. Don't make your living off of enslaving other people. And then he's like, oh, hey, but it's cool, man. You guys can, like, murder people and rape. I don't care. Fine. It's fine. It's, fine. it's cool. Hey, can you hit it for me? Bird Mops. Yep. In a world where dark things happen, they're very really spooky all the time. The main character of your story 
He'll be interesting because he's the hypocrite. What I think, he, I think a lot of that probably is the fault too of the of the audio production and the things that they do lack. Because I'm sure visually as well, the Sandman is a character that is established through, um, in some part, his. Uh, I'm sorry, visual, guys. Like visual visual qualities and the artistic expression of story that you just don't get through sound, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, I'm okay with noise. I'm okay with hearing foot like feet run up and down a hallway right, right, in this type of production. To- yeah. All you need to do is, hey, he's he slugged down a drink. Yeah. I don't need. Yeah. Either. Why can't Why can't Neil Gaiman give me beautiful Follow words? To his gullet. I don't need it. Well, and then the weird, like, like also, um, you know, they get to the point where you have, I would say, the first half of the book up until up until um, the second story, Adal's house and forward, um, that. The narration is tasteful, but then later on in the in the latter half of it, when we begin hearing talk and uh, circumstances in which characters are either almost raped or raped, that you don't you hear bodies against bodies, and it's really dis- I thought really distasteful as an as an audiobook direction choice, like like when um uh Maddock in um in um the story before the thousand cats, the author. Who takes mm-hmm. on Homer's muse? Uh, he, that's the one. That's him, the fourth story, you dude. Literally, hear him taking physical advantage of of her and 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 raping her, and it's oh, fucking yeah. horrendous. Like, I yeah. don't mm-hmm. need to hear that in an audiobook. I don't even want to, and, and I don't. And that's not me being like me being a little a little a little pansy bitch baby. That's not the experience that I need actors to express in an no. audiobook format. Oh, they did. Uh, 100%, Bergamot, they 100%. put it in, and it's it is. Um, be, it's only that that made the the drowning of the cats part like no issue for me to hear because I was already disgusted mm-hmm. by uh by them their choice to instead of narrating the fact that she was raped to allow me to basically hear it and I I wanted to I wanted to turn the audiobook off at that point because it mm-hmm. shit on the art that I know for a fact is present visually in it. I saw that those parts in the in the uh, comic book. I went back and mm-hmm. I found them in the comic book. It's t- for as tastefully drawn as it could be, for as tastefully featured as it could be in a comic book. It is not in the mm-hmm. audiobook. And pe- there's no fucking trigger warnings, there are no content warnings, there's nothing That's like what that I was to say. keep people There are no warnings yep. at all. I don't I mean any- there there's not. I don't think that like, but let's be honest with you. Uh, I don't think we, I don't think you can expect that from any type of piece of media uh, like that's, that's made for mass consumption. Look at Game of Thrones, man. Yeah. Like Game of Thrones, right. the bread and butter, that damn show for the first right. like three, four seasons was, uh, was the objectification of really women. Really quick. Really quick. And- yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean there, to interrupt you. No, you know, I know it's fine. And like, no trigger warnings on that. I mean, they, yes, at the beginning, they're like, "Hey, it contains violence and sexual situations," but like, you're not gonna. I just don't think you're gonna get it. I really, don't think that's right, but I don't think you're gonna get. Really it. Really quick, I want to be the Corinthian eating an eyeball. <laughs> I eat eyeballs. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'm so tired. I'm so tired of hearing people eat. I'm so, so tired of hearing the Sandman theme. I, it's a tiring audiobook. So we're talk- I said, um, go ahead, Lithia. I'm sorry. I was going to say, you know, I'm I'm waiting to talk about my favorite part. And by favorite, I mean. Please do. Oh, my God. Go for it. Because I, I have pages of notes about how much I fucking hated the second half. So we're not going to get to all of it. I know that for a fact. There's shit that I'm going to leave out. And it's going to make me sound like a fucking manic asshole here. Because all I want to do is rage in the second half. So please, Lithia, go for it the big nap that was the last chapter uh uh midsummer night's dream hey guess what first of all yep. let me tell you something as a dude who works yep. in theater and has gone to school for like theater who oh, wow good cool for me uh, I, I don't like shakespeare okay i don't like it uh all you people out there are like i love shakespeare i don't like it um lannery i know you're listening i love you i love you so much um and i love people's uh excitement for shakespeare but like i don't i don't like it because it got shoved into my face in college and in school so much. And, and frankly, I don't, I don't, I'm not smart enough to understand it. And that's not true. What? I'm smart I... enough to understand it, what? but I'm not going to take the time. At... I'm not going to take the time to understand it because it's too much goddamn work, but I don't okay. also, it's boring. It's boring. Shakespeare's boring. That last chapter, guys, I'm going to save you some time. 
Okay. I'm going to save Go you. Go for it. <laughs> Go for it. Life, and I'm going to, I am going to give you the synopsis of the last chapter. Makes sense. A roving theater group is befriended by Dream, who is, uh, they are headed by William Shakespeare. Are you a roving theater group? I'm Dream. I would like, I would like to come watch you. I want you this. Oh, but wait, let me invite all of the fae. All the fairies. All the fairies. They're going to come and watch your play about them <laughs> because you wrote a play about the fairies. And then Sir they're going to go. William. And then they're going to go away. Here's, we got, we got. And the, a kid's going to die. The resident, the resident. Really fairy, undramatically. The resident fairy expert, Bergamot's like, bite me, bite me. Uh, <laughs> Uh, also, uh, Leonard is like, it's cool. Fuck shakes. He used ra the racist language. Um, I, <laughs> man. So the, the best part of that is that as I was re listening to this reading, as I was listening to it, I texted the both of you and I said, yo, okay. So the first half of it hasn't bothered me too much because it's been kind of silly and whatever, but I can feel it getting darker and sinister. You know, it never happened. It never got dark and sinister. It no. was the actual okay. one surprise in the whole damn story. So that's why I didn't mind it. it All didn't... I wanted was her to steal the little boy and right. take him what? back what? to what? the fairy what? realm. What? And he to... didn't. She was like, okay, bye. Bye, if, boy. I'll see you later. If Shakespeare's son died at 11. Oh, uh, Hamnet? Hamnet? Yeah. Why oh, is why that? Your kid that the, shakes? Why isn't it the perfect opportunity to go, oh, he didn't die. He was kidnapped by uh, Titania five years later. Like, easy out. It exists. It's there. Why not? And and, and the kid died. He I just was, died. That didn't, died. didn't come get him. He just I, died. I was emotionally, I got to be honest with you, after the Maddox story, I was emotionally checked out for the last three. <laughs> Because once I got through the cat story and I got through the facade story, which I fucking hated, by the way. Um, and I say I hated it because I didn't we, – we had already distanced ourselves because to be cool in Vertigo Comics, we need to recognize that we're no longer just a fucking DC thing, right? Who needs superheroes anymore in our fucking world? We've got – Serial killers in our fucking world. Our shit's dark, right? We don't need fucking Batman. We don't need fucking this Arkham Asylum. Our shit's dark. And I've got fucking Element Girl who shows up. Like, okay, whatever. Like, it doesn't help me any. Um, I just want to die. And uh, I was so checked out. Kid. And I recognize that the dream country, those four stories, are part of a totally other thing. Then that would have been cool, again, to get those in another, like, audiobook production. But I'm like, where's the plot? How is this going to help me understand the Corinthian more? What the fuck happened? Like, is this going to go back to the dream vortex? What's with Fiddler's Green? Who's Gilbert? I fucking love him so much. I know that Gilbert's actually Fiddler's Green. Instead, it was all just fucking useless filler that has no context. Similar to, and I'm going to talk about another, like, so we all we've we've read and watched Watchmen, and I am specifically saying read and watched because it makes me think about how in reading Watchmen, which is a which is a fantastically paced graphic novel, that we have the story of the Black Freighter, right? The 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 ship, the the ship that is um uh that's going across the seas, and you're like, where? What the fuck does this have to do with the entire the entire graphic novel until you get to the end? And you identify that the creator of the dead psionic squid. Yeah, there's a dead psionic squid. The creator of the dead psionic squid that Ozymandias. It's, awesome. it's fucking awesome. That he uses to trick the world into thinking he's a superhero was the creator of the Black Freighter. That's great. But then when we watch the fucking movie, which, you know what? I'm actually going to say I don't hate the movie. The, the movie doesn't have the fucking psionic squid in it. Ozymandias just does nuclear war. So why do I need the animated Black Freighter to go with it? Because it doesn't fucking make any sense in the context of that particular presentation of the movie. So why in this do I have the dream country at the very end is just bullshit filler? And it is, for the case of the audiobook, just bullshit filler. It is, mm -hmm. it is literally four and a half hours that I did not need because it produces absolutely no further tension, no further conflict, and no furthering and advancement of the plot that's already been fucking resolved before it. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to go I, on a rant. I've been, I've been, I, I've been, I've been burning about this. So you guys might don't like I, Shakespeare, and that's fine. But the last four and a half hours of this fucking thing, I'd rather jerk off the fucking broken glass than listen to it, man. Fucking cats I, having sex. Holy um, shit. 
watching watching Lithia's face for that last <laughs> rant sorry. was was the exact same face I had pretty much listening to this whole audiobook. <laughs> sorry, it was just Lithia. this this utter desolation of like <laughs> like confusion and it Sis, keep going like with yeah, the things you were talking do. about. I'm sorry. We like keep interrupting you and you're here no, because you're no, the no, expert. No, I love this because <laughs> because I, this is exactly how I feel about this though. Is how Rans is expressing. I don't need to say anything. I'm fine. Can I ask you a question to, uh, like about the 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 graphic novels themselves, the comic books? Um are they written in what I like to call uh the early vertigo three four color style which is the way the way i remember like the the early constantine comics being the early yes. hellblazers it was very sketchy but detailed art of of hu uh, you know like mostly humans um done where it was like they didn't have a lot of time or budget and so they went okay you're going to draw these beautiful drawings of people and situations but we're only giving you a color palette of three or four colors right. and like they're never like the actual color that a thing is like if there's a but if there's a dude in the picture like pink Yes, exactly. But it, and it changes depending on the frame because the color doesn't matter because it's all surreal and it's all this idea of like is that what is that what this looks like too? Because I'm not I'm not mm. saying that I hate it. I'm saying that it feels like it's I'm going to piss some people off right now that it's a section of a, a part of comic history that was exceptionally cheap and lazy and they tried to pass it off as edgy and artsy. Lithia, go so, for it first because I have a response. So here's here's what I think it was. I, I think it I don't think it was the cheap and lazy. I think at the time the beginning of it was, okay, let's do this thing. We're not going to pour a lot of money into it. And we're going to see if it takes off. Yeah. And if it does, cool. And if it doesn't, well, then we haven't wasted anything on it. And it took off. And that's how it ended up Vertigo being its own thing, but still part of DC. Mm -hmm. And even if you look at the comics and the graphic novels, there's still that sketch feel to it, but it evolves as it goes through. Like there's more time given to it. Is yeah. there a ton of color in it? No, there's not a ton of color. Well, it's very, it's very comic book watercolor style. I that's how I would uh, describe it. It's uh, very mm -hmm. I don't think it's three color, but it's you'd be lucky if you got 16 colors out of it. It's also Bob, I would venture to say it's that era as well, because knowing that Sam Keith, the guy who did the Max, uh, was also the originator of the design of the Sandman himself. Um, mm -hmm. it, a lot of it is that really precise, almost what I'm going to say, like ink splatter style, where it looks like they're um, – action instead of instead of actions on the page being like a fist and like the 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 swing of the fist it's almost like a mm -hmm. spatter of ink behind it that makes it look this really like jackson pollock quality mm -hmm. to the motion almost like yeah. almost like he's literally splattering paint on the page and i actually think it's really striking and beautiful okay. it's one so of the reasons i yeah. liked the max so much mm -hmm. was and and that's actually like as i'm continuing to read this uh, as a comic it is very like tight. It's not like that because I think of that it's three. Very four. simplistic. Yeah. There's yeah. not a lot of mess in the background. There's not a lot of visual mm -hmm. noise going mm -hmm. on. Yes. If you look at these, a lot of the pages are done, not even broken up. It's like three or four different um, uh, visuals, but there's no lines separating them. It's all one. And then the background is like, I was just looking at a page online and it, the background's all blue. It's all yeah. one solid color mm -hmm. blue. That's, I, that's kind of what I mean. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Neil Gaiman, honestly, Neil Gaiman's touch in it as an as a creator, probably, uh, and I say combined with Sam Keith as well. Um, uh, you know, and not knowing too much about comic books and being able to like absolutely like confidently say that if you were to ask me who my favorite comic book artist would be, it would be Sam Keith. Um, it feels like it was like raised to a higher standard. It wasn't like the Constantine Hellblazer stuff with Garth Ennis, where it's like they were trying to save on color. Uh, so it's like, okay, if there's skin on the page, they're all fucking pink. If there's hair on the page, it's all fucking yellow. Um, where it was like that it was like mass printing, yeah. Um, um, and 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 dot dot coloring. Um, 
And it says, uh, Bergamot says, she says uh, it actually became their prestige project, so they put more effort into the visuals. The art style changes noticeably as it goes along as a reflection of the tone of whatever story's happening. Um, and I think also, too, that takes on, it takes on the form of the different writers and different artists as it was going along. Uh, mm-hmm. I think visually it's amazing. Cool. Like, like take the, if, you, if you get a chance, take the time to... There's actually somebody on Twitter who literally posts a random fucking Sandman panel every day, and it's really neat. It's all out of context, <laughs> but it's really cool. That's cool. Um, because you know the thing this is making me think about more than anything is you know if like everybody if you're like hey you should go check out uh you know the the these storylines of the Sandman is that I'm definitely gonna go back and read Hellblazer so yeah, yeah thanks yeah well because all I want is more fucking John Constantine no and I, like oh, to be honest with you I I don't think that I will ever um maybe and maybe this maybe this audiobook has done a disservice I don't feel like I need to jump back into this universe I feel like I actually all I want is more Hellblazer after this. Yeah, like, yeah, I just want to go back. I want to go back to like, cause I, right back to the beginning of the early, uh, will, the early comics and just, and kind of blast through all of it, at least all the way to like through dangerous habits. I and see. Then look. I see my friend THP Peridian in the chat. Also. Hello, battle Dave in the chat. I was drinking pickle juice. Eat my ass, my friend. Um, and I just want to say that all oh, what I need in my life from this audiobook is, is Mo John Constantine. That's I, I need I need more of that. Like that part I need him to not call him John Constantine, man. <laughs> that part of the book was my absolute favorite part. Because, yeah, no, that was the I best was hoping, part of the book. I was hoping that Sandman would would team up more with John Constantine. And the fact that John yeah. Constantine didn't come in, didn't get to use any of his occult skills, but he did get fucking totally plastered, which is great. I was mm-hmm. like, but but I want but I but I want more. I want more of him. I want more of him. <laughs> um, we were talking earlier about the Jack Mort problem yeah. that I have. So, okay, tell me about this. Okay, Lithia, Bob, have you guys read Dark Tower? I have stalled at about, I think it's book, book three. three or book four. Book three, I think. Wasteland. I, have, is, I have not read it. Which is um, a, where the giants, the, yes, the giants. The book, the book, that was the Wasteland, yep. That's um, that's where I stalled. Which is an understandable place to stall. Um. So Jack Mort is a character in the second book of the Dark Tower series. Now, Stephen King did many, many, many things right, but he also did lots of things really wrong. And some of the things that I think he did wrong as an author is maybe he's the originator of a lot of the tropes, but he really embraces a lot of, like, what I think are really, nowadays, I look back and really shitty tropes, but especially prominent in the 70s to the 90s, the serial killer trope, where it's like, I'm a serial killer, and I'm a fucking dark guy. And, like... I love dark things, and if there's a fucking thing that you think is gross, I do it. So that Jack Mort in the second, uh, he's a, he's a he's a serial killer who kills randomly by doing shit like dropping bricks out of windows to kill fuckers. Okay, yeah, I totally remember. But yeah. but he jerks off at the same time. He's so mm-hmm. edgy. He's like, I fucking love to kill people, and he I edges. do I do it to jerk off. His name is also Jack Mort. Mort is the shittiest name for a killer. Come on. I'm Jack Death. Like, what if, okay, whatever, right? I, felt- is it, I mean, is that kind of what he's doing, though, like with Randall Flagg and stuff like yeah, that, where he's, the idea is that this dude is is the personification of uh, what a serial killer come on, is Remus and what you Lupin. think they are. The, come on, Remus Lupin, right? You can't tell me, you can't fucking shove something even more profoundly into my eyes, right? I'm fucking smart. I don't need blood on the stormtrooper's helmet to tell me he's the good guy right yo man that's my that's the finn problem right there that i keep talking about like i don't need that um i never needed it he's his acting and i and i stand by the fact that john boyega's <laughs> acting is good enough that he could not have had that mark on his face and idiot dumb babies out there still would have known which stormtrooper it was so, oh, he's the good stormtrooper that's upset. Who's having doubts? Why? Oh, I don't know. Because maybe he's the one that's not shooting anybody. I like how I, Bergamot's like, my name is Jack Off Death. Yes, Jack Off Death is Jack Moore. I feel like the Sandman, the, the, the story, specifically the Corinthian story, suffers from the Jack Moore problem, which is like, if it's fucking dark, we're going to really embrace it, right? Not only do I have fucking mouths for eyes, but we're going to a serial killer convention. And at the serial killer convention... There's a guy who loves to have sex with underage girls and then try to kill them. Like, it's like anything you can do. It's like once they pulled away from the DC universe, even though they're still in it, once they pulled away from the DC properties, 
it was almost like in the doll's house. They were desperately trying to like find their edgy side, and they just couldn't do it. It just doesn't translate well. It just sounds stupid half the time. It's like reading Johnny the Homicidal Maniac now. So what you're saying is the spooky stuff, the stuff that's spelled S-P-E-E-W-E-K-Y. Did all that stuff. really bothered you like that you're saying the spooky stuff bothered you because hey guess what that's what i was saying last week that it's so overly predictably spooky and that they're just like if we can take the bad the worst aspect of a situation or person we're going to try to cram them into this this storyline because that's what we're doing here we're just trying to get the deepest recesses of the human darkness. I didn't feel that was so much of a... <laughs> I didn't feel like that was so much of a... Um, a problem in the first story arc. The second story arc, though, it was, like, all over. And Bergamot... I'm, I'm going back. We got comments in the chat. Bergamot's right. Like, the, what happened in the farmhouse basement was way darker and edgy than the entire serial killer convention. 100%. Absolutely. Yep. And you know what? Even that, yep. I was like... I was sort of like, this feels like mailed in fear. Jed in the world of dreams. Right. <laughs> uh, and a lot of it felt like mailed in fear. Like there was stuff that happened with Dr. Destiny. Like when Dr. Destiny traps six people in their nightmares over the course of 24 hours in a diner, cool, creative, clever. I enjoyed it. It was hard to listen to, but I enjoyed it because it was unique. All the shit was like, serial killer convention. I do have sex with the young ladies. Also, I keep kids in the basement because I want the money. Like, I, I think, and I think what Berg sorry, is Lippie. talking about specifically is like the situation of the basement. Oh, sorry, God, uh, itself is very like it's upsetting yes, to think yes. of like just child abuse in general. One hundred percent. Honestly, but then they but they go deeper into that too. They go into the kid's mind yeah, who is yeah, trying yeah. to escape from everything with that. And I was intrigued by that. Yes. I was very yeah. intrigued by that part of the storytelling. Mm-hmm. I didn't need the rest of it. Yep. And 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 probably because it's something we know happens in real life, as just said in the chat, right? Like like we were saying yep. at one point, that's the reason I stopped watching. I think it was here. The reason I stopped watching American Horror Story was because the kid shooting yes. up the school was the most terrifying thing I could imagine. I didn't need anything more than that. Like, we don't have to go deep to be scared. But I did, Bob. I was thinking all about when I was reading this. I was like, oh, my God, Bob was right. It just keeps getting spookier and spookier. Yeah. And I think Neil Gaiman is smart enough as a creator to that. He- that was not entirely his intent. And it feels like they were like, we can be spooky as shit, artists. Go ahead, Lithia. Yeah, and then we that. get – and we it's, spoo- it's spooky. It's spooky. And then we get Shakespeare. So it's all fine. It's good. <laughs> it's fine. I, it's, uh, which it, it, it had no. I it just pisses me off. There was no climax to the story. No, None. it was like you want to talk about jerking off. It was like jerking off, and then uh, and then your mom walks in, and you're like, oh, I better cover this up real quick. Um, I uh, <laughs> I said there was a lot of. Sh- I was I, I coined another phrase. I said there's a lot of. Uh, sh- my mom, my mom has walked in on me jerking off. Just want you to know. You got the same man behind you blowing one out too. Look at him. What? Um, <laughs> I uh, I call it a bunch of shock crock where it's like stuff that's meant to like make me feel shocked and I'm like, yo, I I also read scary stories to tell in the dark. <laughs> I'm fine, dude. The scariest shit I was is not scary stuff. The scary shit is not the girl's head coming off and she removes the ribbon. It's finding out that she's got a fucking insane clown posse tattoo when you remove the ribbon. That's what's fucking scary. I've read goosebump stories. That yeah. Are scary. Yeah, uh, um, I, I, I have to say that like, and it, even like to the later parts of the dollhouse when when she starts, when she's becoming the Rose is becoming the void, and everyone's dreams start to coalesce into yes. like this the the central like dream when she starts opening uh, connecting all of them. Yeah, and I'm sort of like, okay, so in in. In your dreams, you know that Barbie's really deep. She lives this deep fantasy life um, with, I'm going to be honest, what was a really kind of 
uh, like a little bit, a little bit disturbing Native American portrayal because it was not. I don't think that was a Native American, but it was intended to sound like the stereotype of it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and I, is that an artistic choice? Is that supposed to be the statement that Barbie Barbie thinks that that's what a Native American sounds like, or is that well, because we're supposed to think that's what a Native if, American if sounds I, like? But if I if I need, I felt like I needed my hand held a lot by narration in these parts, and I didn't mm -hmm. get it. Like the stuff, it was like all of a sudden Neil Gaiman's voice was just no longer important to the story as a narrator, and like I would, mm -hmm. I needed that stuff. Like I needed to, I needed that visual. I needed what the what the art brings to the page. I needed that in sound, and I didn't get it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, hey, I man. think they, they let that go. They did. Um, I mean, like, I think that it, it's trying to, at one point, like, the, it's trying to define itself beyond the constraints of that DC universe, and it absolutely falls, like, it falls way apart when it gets into, like, that 80s, 90s, like, I'm gonna be mm -hmm. fucking scary for scary's yeah. sake. And, and, that's, and that's my problem with the whole thing, man. Like, I just don't, uh, I'm, I'm done with people trying to be edgy and I, and I think maybe you're right like maybe but i don't know does like neil gaiman is one of the executive producers on this project like he's a boy who was like hey this is my stories let's make them real um he has to know like but but somebody should have come in somebody from dc once again the people upstairs at dc screwing up it's like the Zack snyder problem they go oh yeah man Zack snyder that sounds like a great idea just Make uh give Batman a machine gun. Lithia, that sounds like a good idea. There are so many thoughts in your eyes at the moment, Lithia, and I want to acknowledge that. No, I'm no, I completely <laughs> follow this because DC <laughs> shits the bed yep. every time. Uh, Wonder Woman, they've done Wonder Woman. Yep. Thank you. That's what. That's it. Like right now, the, the I, woman I, at the helm, and we got this. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I, people, I I applaud um Birds of Prey for what it was, and I like um. Uh, you know, I like all the actors that were in it, but I don't think it was a great movie. I mean, it tried to do something, and congratu congratulations for trying to do it, but I was fucking bored and annoyed at how uh, edgy it was the whole time. Like, right. I, um, I didn't... It was like, it was very much like this story. Uh, like, like this book. Dorn in the chat asking... Robert Smith. Robert Smith. Yeah. yeah. Hello, hello new newcomers, noob fellas. We've got lots of people hanging out in the chats. And, all right, so here's where I want to put this for. Do you guys have any other things that you want to mention that jumped out to you? Like positives, negatives, things that you like. Would you recommend this audiobook to anyone? And I would say that would you recommend it to Sandman fans? Would you recommend it to non-Sandman fans? Would you not? What, what are your takes on that? Do you, uh, do you want to go first? Or yeah, do you okay. want me to go first? Okay. You go first. I'm going to go first. Okay. So I – when it comes to Sandman fans, of course, listen to it. I mean, bottom line, you have to listen to it. I think you have to because it is so, it, it's the books. It does not skip over anything. It is, it is word for word, mm -hmm. the books. If you are not a Sandman fan, listen through maybe the Corinthian and then stop. Don't go to the end. Yep. It's not worth it. It is not necessary for you. You'll be bored. It's just, it's not there. I, I think the first five, five chapters, five or six chapters are enough. I, I Do I want more of it? Of course I want more of it. I love the Vertigo stuff. I would love to see a death series. Yes. Give me that. Yeah. Don't give me Kat Dennings. Give me somebody else. Uh, give me Kat Dennings, who all of a sudden went from Rance's favorite I, voice actor to her his uh, least favorite in this. I know. I know. And I wanted to love her. And uh, it pissed me off. You, it pissed me off! <laughs> I would... Uh, Bob, do you want to go with the next one? Sure, I'll go. I'll go. That's fine. <laughs> what That's was fine. that? What was Actually, Lithia, what was that really quick, if you don't mind? Um, I heard... I'm hearing a little something... I'm hearing a little something. Could you, in just a minute, could you tell me at the right time what it really did? Oh. It pissed me off! Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay. So what's funny is uh, I, as I've said over and over again, I did not enjoy this experience. I would suggest that if you're not, if you don't know anything about Sandman, that you should start with the first storyline, um, go all the way through that, then get to the story about the man who lives forever, whatever the hell that dude's name is. Yes, Hob. Um, Hob. Yes. Then jump all the way forward and listen to the last chapter of the book, chapter 20. Yep. Then listen to the four chapters before that, mm-hmm. or the three chapters before that. Then go all the way back yes. and start to listen to the like, there's I uh, no problem with the filler episode. Put it in the right spot. The if order, you were taking yep. those yeah, out yep, of order, absolutely. put them in the middle of the book because, they, because the Shakespeare story makes sense in the context of the man who yes, lives forever. Absolutely. Because he's I, there. Uh, it I'm 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 right there with you. I think that is that is the that is the heart of my issue with this is that it was too too loyal to mm-hmm. the comics to a fault. And and, and it's just like it's like the same thing of like if I go to a live show and it sounds exactly like the CD, I might as well actually just stay at home and fucking listen to the CD. I disagree with you on that. It's a dis- it's a gr- disagreement that I've always had with people about live shows with bands. I want to hear that album. I showed up to hear you play that album. I don't want to hear you play a song that doesn't sound anything like my favorite song. Play my favorite song and yeah, yeah make it it should sound live, but it should sound like the album. I want to recognize what I'm listening to. I don't want to show up and hear you play a 50 minute version uh like to hear uh, Kiss play 50 yeah. minute version uh jazz version of I want to rock and roll all night. Well, I, and and I uh a bur- yeah, party every day. Uh, Bergamot said here, it sounds like Sam and fans are the only ones who would have a comprehensive idea what the hell is going on here. But then again, why listen to this when you can just reread the comics? I'm gonna say I'm right there with that. I okay, so I I want to and I want to speak to that specifically yeah. because that's where I'm going with my with. My oh, point I'm sorry, I didn't realize you finished. It's fine. No, it's fine. It's didn't cool. Finish. Um, if you take if I think if you take those stories in that order, it makes it listening to it more comprehensive right. and functional right as a storytelling device. I think that it's important. Um, it's not like comic books need. We don't need a uh, a booster right now. Like comic book culture is very uh, popular, mm-hmm. but I would like to see more exposure for lesser, less popular titles like this yeah. in a manner that isn't a movie. I don't actually want to see sandman in a movie i don't really think i want to see uh hellblazer in a movie we've tried that already and hollywood screwed it up um especially when you're talking about dc properties so give me uh an outlet like give me an, or an introduction for someone who wouldn't normally read that comic because now I, I, joking about it i'd rather go back and read the comic but i but having the introduction is good and starting to get where some of these characters are from it's not confusing like i know what's going on the whole time because i'm not an idiot um, <laughs> well well i'm definitely the idiot then because i had to do a little bit of uh helping myself out understand especially the dr destiny stuff i was like okay uh... so i i think it's good i think it's a good introduction to yeah. that to that medium for people so I wouldn't mind seeing other lesser known comics um, translated into audiobook. Also, because damn, I'm gonna say this: uh, finding comics online legally is exp- is an expensive proposition. Yep. Like buying them in the store is an expensive proposition. Yep. Comics comics are not like go to the corner store and buy one for ten cents right. anymore. And you got to subscribe if you want that whole storyline, or you got to wait till the full graphic novel. And comes it's out. also overwhelming. I uh, up till about three years ago, I actually had um, uh, my wife and I had um, comic subscriptions, and it got to the point where it mm-hmm. was we were getting into so many different ones that it was overwhelming. We were dropping like literally fifty dollars every two weeks, and it was like we can't do this. I can't keep up with all these fucking comics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, it was that, I got other shit to do with my life. Sorry, I love end, you, comics. Was that the end of your statement, buddy? Yeah, that's it. So I was saying very similar to what you guys have both said and what was also said in the chat, right? Like, I think it's a great, approachable way to enjoy the story. I do feel like people who are super into Sandman are going to know what the fuck's going on, and they're going to be able to fill in those blanks that Neil Gaiman's beautiful narration doesn't do. 
Um, but my suggestion, actually, <laughs> you were talking about the filler stories. If I was going to tell anybody who's not into Sandman to listen to this, I would say save yourself five hours. Listen from episode one through episode eight. Then listen from episode 11 through episode 16 and be done. Those are your two main story arcs that feed off each other. Nothing extra. Nothing needed in those side stories. You get everything you have to get, and you're good. And you save five hours of time that I feel is honestly a waste in an audiobook format. Not mm-hmm. in a comic book format, in an audiobook format. Go ahead, Lithia. You use those five hours to actually go and read. The yes, book. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, and... Uh, so that I find disappointing because it feels like they were too dedicated to the comic book and not enough to the unique new way of expressing the story. It's okay to adapt. It's yes. okay to take a thing. We all understand as people like who live in a world where there are no original ideas that you can you can take it and you can you can play with it a little bit. If it's going to make it okay. We've talked about the the crow. Last week we talked about the crow. Fucking crow fans get pissed off. Like they love the movie, but they get pissed off with the way that the the story and the bad guys are interpreted and how certain bad guys are not the same bad guys in the book. And they did like and 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 that the, like they gave the crow a weakness. Well, you know what, dudes? It's a it was a comic book movie and it was a superhero movie when we didn't have superhero movies. So they were like, hey, well, we kind of need to give him a superhero weakness because the general public can't just get behind this story of revenge that is completely about like getting that revenge and that, that uh, psychological closure. Yep. And so instead they went, well, we'll give him a weakness. So he has to actually fight and use like overcome uh, a problem at the end, instead of just running a guy off the road and beating him to death with a hammer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I do, I agree with what was also just commented too, that like you could have packaged these in like two totally separate audiobooks, quote unquote. Like you could have done the first part as its own arc, the second half episode, and then have like your extra stories that don't fucking, but there's, I need a, when I'm listening to an audiobook, I need a beginning, middle and end the way that the work is meant to be best enjoyed. And I didn't feel like I got that from this. I've spent full audible price for a five hour Doctor Who yeah. uh, book. Yeah. You know, because I love Doctor Who. Yep. Like, it's not because I was like, like, I'll do it. I'll spend it. I may not always be like, oh, wow, I'll use my credit for this. Sometimes I'll buy it, you know, because it's a little bit less expensive. But yeah, if you were to, if you were to present this to me in two parts and then maybe say they were like uh, a $7 purchase or a $10 purchase, I'd do it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, I feel like they did themselves a disservice, uh, and actually, the, the Sandman a disservice. Two dollars, two dollars an hour entertainment. I can get behind that. Yeah, I'm much more about a smaller time, smaller time for my attention. I didn't need mm-hmm. ten hours. Yeah, give me three hours. Mm-hmm. Give me four hours of story time. Something that I know by the end of the week on my commute, I've I've finished listening to by the end. Or of make the week, my car. Or make it episodes. Wait, they could have waited. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it thing right now that's probably going to get me in trouble um audible is working on uh their podcast format right now i'm sure it's out there um so like why don't you just wait wait and make this part of your podcast Mm -hmm. series do you really need to like if i'm paying you my monthly subscription anyway do you really need that much more from me like make it make you could have had 20 weeks of podcast uh, content by releasing this in 40 minute sequences. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's what it, cause that's what it sounds like it's and, made for. And it feels like the, like there is a diversionary quality to comic books. Um, I was joking with somebody talking about otherwise that's comic books are very ADD, right? Like you pick up a comic book and if it's, you pick up a collection of comics, it's like, you've got, uh, you know, you've got issue one, issue two, issue three is some other fuck off thing that you're like, what does this have to do anything with? Issue four, issue five, issue six, issue seven, some fuck off thing that nobody knows what it is. Eight, nine, and and that's not the way I listen to an audiobook. That's not the way I listen to an audio drama. That's the way I read a comic book. Um, mm-hmm. and so I don't need that diversionary quality to the way the stories are told. Um, it doesn't actually do the original work a great deal of service. 
But you did. You had to pay for all of that overproduction. All of those people <laughs> screaming and all of our friends taking big, long gulps. I'm out of drink. I drank all my drank earlier. Drank all your drank? I should have drank a lot of yeah. V8. Well, are there any uh, any last minute things that either people that are uh, that are watching us tonight want to say thoughts that they might have had, and in the meantime, thoughts that you guys might have had? Anybody have any questions? I do. Why did you make me listen to this second half of this book? You chose it. You fucking. Oh, I am. You know what? I am. I'm the one. I'm normally the one who picks the books for this damn podcast. Fun. And I love I love making us suffer. And then I get mad about it. Why do I? I don't have any right to be mad. Like next week, we're listening to Alien 3 on Audible. And it's going to not took, be good. You did. Bergamot said you took the <laughs> oath. Uh, the first half. Of, um, let me give you my final statement here from me. The first half of this audiobook fucks. The second half of this audiobook sucks. Stop. So, like, um, hit, yes. it. hit it. Hit it. Oh, oh. Uh, no. It's cool. And Sam <laughs> Damn it, you cut me off. I was going to say, I was just going to say, it fucks. And then it sucks. <laughs> uh, uh, in this case, uh, a viewer said, Bergamot says, in this case, the medium really is inextricable from the message. And that absolutely is the case. Ideally, this should be read. Um, even the way that the plot is demonstrated, even the way that the power levels of these characters are put forward, it's best consumed, I think, as a, as a graphic novel. It's a great audiobook, but second half blows. Also, uh, yeah, uh, the joke about Robert Smith um, that I put on Instagram earlier today and that uh, Dorn pointed out that, you know, Sandman looks like uh, Robert Smith. Let's talk about the fact that nobody looks at a person who looks like that out in the real world and goes, I'm taking you seriously. <laughs> like Robert Smith looks like a goddamn mess. He uh, one of my he's one of my heroes. And if you looked at the man, he looks like a goddamn mess. Like his his teased out hair that that. Oh, my God. Like if if you were to walk past a comb, he'd die. Show me how you do that trick. The one that makes me. And I, and I look at the pictures of like of of Dream, and I'm just like, me love, she said. Oh, and to her how does that even happen? You have to choose that. You have to choose that look. It's not like it's a natural look. It's not like my hair just goes ah, by itself. I run away with you. Yeah, we're gonna get nailed for copyright. No, we're not, because that that actually would require somebody singing. Well, I know what you need to do though. You need to hit it again. Words. One last one for the road. Robert Smith's gonna die soon. <laughs> Jesus, that got real dark. That got darker than most of the rest of the Sandman. Hey, did you have anything for us, bro? No, I didn't. I wish I, had a, okay. wish I had a quiz. Um, a few comments. Burgers saying that he's jealous of his hair. He wishes that his would grow. Burgers, I wish your hair would grow as well. You're a beautiful man. Uh, Dornwell saying that he's got new music coming out, fam. Not until he... <laughs> Not until he rocks that mixtape. <laughs> <laughs> and uh Bergamot saying only only Robert Smith stylist knows for sure. Um I think we got a lot of cool things coming up, Bob. Can you tell us really quick? I know Battle Dave for particular, one of our listeners, Battle Dave, is gonna be mm -hmm. real psyched about one of the choices you have made for a book coming up. So I'd like you to just really tell us what the next few weeks hold in store. Okay. Okay, so um, next we are going to be doing, as I said, Alien 3 um, by uh, uh, the heck's that dude's name? William, uh, Gibson. William Gibson. By William Gibson, cyberpunk master William Gibson. So um, it's also an overproduced audiobook, so we'll be bitching about that too. And that's going to be also, a one-episode special, right? One episode because it's short as hell. Um, the week after that, we're going to dive into a new territory, and we are going to listen and read to um, a warhammer children's book 
I don't know where it is off the top of my head. Like I don't have it open because I don't remember. Um, but yeah, there's a series of children's books written for Warhammer and Warhammer 40K where these kids go to the different worlds. So this is we're a gonna... Necrons book in particular. Yes, kids fighting yeah, Necrons. the first one is Necrons. Yeah, hell so yeah. We're... I I'm so fucking angry that we have to read Aliens first and then go mm -hmm. to this. Like, so we're going to do that. And what we're going to do now is we... I know, right? Yeah. So we think that for what... Uh, because we thought it'd be a really cool project once a month as me being... Um, uh, a pseudo parent and uh there's probably other parents out there Kids versus nids <laughs> <laughs> oh, only warhammer nerds get that shit um. <laughs> kids versus nids dornwell says <laughs> um we, right we wanted to do this idea where maybe we once a month do a kid's book and do the first half of the episode kid friendly no and discuss words no cuss words. I gotta work on that one. Just, just talk about all the like the cool stuff that is apparent. You might think that is fun for your kid and check it out and if it's enjoyable and if you should choose it as a choice for your kid. And then the second half of the episode, we'll go into full adult mode and tell your kids to go to bed. It's bedtime, and then we'll talk about all the shitty how stuff. Much this kid's uh, how much this? How much fucks? Because yeah. it will. Because you know yeah, what? Yep. I have full faith that we're going to come out of the other side of this going like, this kid's book is fucking badass, right? Like the Animorphs mm -hmm. books. Those things, they might be a meme. Them shits are badass. Man, I can't like... Adventures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, goosebumps. Like there's all, there's, there's all sorts of badass stuff out there for kids that I think that it would be really cool to like, as a service to parents, start like a series, take a book out of a series and go, hey, is this series good for your kids? Start here and maybe this is the way to do it. Because like, there's some interesting new stuff like um, on Netflix, my youngest has been watching The Last Kids on Earth, which he's been reading that series too. And there's a lot of good messages and important things that they're saying in that. And also it's really progressive. So I'm like, I'm about it. I'll read one of these books, see what it's like. And also it gives me a chance to see like, what my kids reading and and other people for for me to actually say to you hey yes this is a book your kids should look at or no like this is garbage and you shouldn't let your kid read this yep. hey, you could actually have a conversation with an adolescent about reading yeah i want to yeah. make sure these kids know they can only read books that fuck yo this book fucks man <laughs> so i want to toss something out there really quick to i uh, before we finish off for the day Mm -hmm. So we've been going through the same and I know that lots of people obviously like we're trying to engage more with the chat because honestly, people have read these things. They have more knowledge than we do. And I want to make sure we bring that forward and people have the knowledge about that kind of stuff. Like Battle Dave says, super hot opinions, bring them forward. Like we should, mm -hmm. we should be, we're, we're, we're talking heads, but we're not the only voice here. Right. And I think that's what yeah. makes a, what makes something like this more enjoyable. So we're trying to be better about it. If you have any suggestions about this, let us know. But what I do want to offer out there is this, I'm putting up a contest. To everyone that may be listening today or moving forward. So, Bob, you're more than welcome to talk about this on your Instagram. I'm going to post about this on Twitter. Oh, my God. We're dropping all sorts of hot stuff because I have something, too. It's your okay. You go first, though. So, here is my contest. By this point next week, I want to announce the winner at the next um, – uh, uh, during the next show. Mm -hmm. I would like anyone to submit by Twitter their best – drinking and eating asmr that could have been <laughs> featured in sam man and we're gonna vote on it next week oh that sounds so good that's so hot. so so i want you to drink the grossest shit you can and take that shit as an asmr video or whatever and send it whoever does is gonna get a 15 dollar amazon gift card nice nice okay i gotta i gotta take my but headset off for a second we're not eligible of so. course not give me one second what? That's bullshit. nope we're not eligible what the hell Oh, you're eligible, maybe. I just buy one for myself. It's fine. Okay, I got two things here since we're talking about contests. So my hat, my beautiful new hat almost fell off, which is the thing that I know got a lot of people to show up tonight, by the way, on my Instagram. So talking about Instagram, uh, if you want to follow us, hey, bro, why don't you hit us up with the Twitter that you're at? Okay, my Twitter is at Violence Obscene. Okay, Twitter. so that's where, yep. that's where you got to tag, right? Yes, at Violence Obscene on Twitter. Okay, why don't you tag Violence Obscene on Twitter and do um, hashtag Sandman ASMR. Cool, cool. That way, that way, you know, you, we know exactly which ones are the entries. So um, we're also trying to build up the um, uh, Instagram for this uh, show. So if you're looking for us on Instagram, follow us at the Quarantine Book Club Podcast. 
if you uh if we hit when we hit 250 followers on that instagram we will be giving away this google nest mini oh my god uh hey cool cool maybe back here yeah see it's there still in package google nest mini um and we'll be doing a raffle first winner gets the google nest mini second winner gets my copy of star wars splinter the mind's eye that is uh notated and uh, I will send it to you and sign it to you and say love. Not like you care because it's not like it's worth anything, but just so you get uh, you, you get like a second runner up prize. Um, so that uh, that being I said, that. I love that. That's so cool. We can just get rid of our fucking followers. garbage. We can just <laughs> maybe I can just get rid of my old Doom book. This is not garbage, man. This is no, it's this Splinter of the Mind's Eye. It's like a real thing. Splinter of the Mind's Eye. I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. No. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you want to do yours too? Do you have your copy? We'll do first, second, and third. Somewhere, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I'll do mine, and I'm going to write a special note in it for whoever's okay. third. Okay, it fell apart, too. Oh, no, is that your Doom No, book? that's my Doom but, books. Uh, but my, okay. I'm going to write a special note in it to whoever's third. So follow us on uh, Instagram at the Quarantine Book Club Podcast. Our Facebook is at the Quarantine Book Club. If you're looking for our website, www.thequarantinebookclub.com. Make sure you add that the, because let's face it, the other Quarantine Book Club is really stuffy. They may be great people, but it, it's probably fucking boring and stupid. Um, go ahead and follow us on, uh, follow me on Twitch at, what the heck's my name? Bob Design. Yep. Uh, uh, you're at currently on uh rance's twitch at violence obscene uh be sure to find us on youtube and whatever wherever you find a uh, great podcast like apple uh, podcasts like and review all that good good, good, good stuff lithia i want to tell you i'm so glad that you came by for these you're always more than welcome to come by and do this with us i think it's so fun to do this as like a, a triplicate do you have anything that you want to um that you want to plug really quick for being here with us anything that you want people to check out so i have um i have two instagram accounts i have Lithia's Creations uh, is my one account, and um, Broadway Buttons is my other account, and that's B R D W Y Broad. Yeah, that's it. Uh, buttons. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, just hit me up on there. I do crafts, DIYs, fun stuff, dumb stuff, all kinds of neat things. Um, but yeah. I, I really enjoyed this, guys. I, I like hanging out with you a lot, and I liked, I liked, I loved texting you guys back and forth about <laughs> what kind of hell we were in when we were going oh, through man. this. So, and we will, you know, we will do something else again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Sometimes, I don't know. I, I also have to tell you guys something. Sometimes I really think about things that my, my sisters brought into my life, and that my brothers brought into my life, and that. I'm just so happy that they're present with me and that out of all of us, I'm going to die last. And that's going to be the saddest fucking thing I can possibly imagine unless something terrible were to happen to me beforehand. So please don't leave me in this world by myself for too long. Um, let me know when I can take my cyanide because when Lithia fucking kicks it, Bob, and then you kick it. Um, guys, I don't think I can exist without you. So let's just create a suicide pact together and um, we'll take care of that off the air. My, my, uh, I have to give a shout out to my son, Caleb. He has helped a lot with my sound this yeah. week, mm -hmm. letting me use his computer. And he is actually on his bed behind me because I'm in his bedroom snoring. Uh, so that's I also, how exciting I this was this week. I want to also say that Caleb, uh, has also created for the quarantine book club. I wish my, my thing would, would focus. There we go. Minis, oh, there you go minis for both bob and i that i fucking love it is here all the time there is such amazing details this does it no justice uh, in fact mm -hmm. him uh he and uh dorn recently won a um contest yes. a painting contest so proud of them um, uh, so yeah i love mine too mine's up in my bedroom it's up on a on a display next to my bed have it here all is the time it watch so you time. doing it um, it watches you doing it yeah because i'm freaky like that i like people watching me do it. i like I my watching there. myself watching me, me do it so we're gonna we're gonna end it here uh, with one more one more shout out. But uh, hang out if you are um, hang out for just a few minutes. We're gonna raid somebody as we always do at the end of a Twitch stream. So uh, really quick, I'd like to say well, you know what we need to do one more fucking time. Let's call out these last shout outs. Um, I'm Rance. I'm Bob. And I'm Lithia. It is.
dark place. We read shitty books. And everybody knows what it is. It is the... Quarantine. Quarantine Book Club. Book Club. All right, thanks for joining us tonight, you guys. I appreciate it. Um, we are going to go ahead and go raid Shawnee Mnemonic now, who is playing GeoGuessr. So hang out for a little bit. Do some yeah. challenges with him. Um, Yo, GeoGuessr's fun. GeoGuessr's fun as shit. Find out all about geography. By this point, the podcast is over with, so Bobby will be yeah. rolling the credits. But uh, uh, So yeah. hang out with Shawnee. Tell him he said hi. Tell him the QBC sent you, or just call him a fucking okay. asshole other way. Um, so we are going to raid Shawnee Mnemonic right now. You guys have an That's awesome fun. rest of your night. Bye, sis. Bye, I bro. love you. Bye. Love you kisses. Thanks so kisses. much, you guys. Bye-bye. Okay, now there's the awkward part. We just stand here for a second. We until... just stand here and try to leave. Okay. All right, I'm peacing out. We're, we're going to end this stream. See ya, bitches.